Well, here we are uh, back for another episode of Teen Tested Crafts. And we're going to do it a little different today. Um, we are going to swap places. So I'm going to show the craft while Candle provides the color commentary. This time she's going to tell us all about her experiences working with this craft. Today's craft is a cute little uh, coin catcher piggy. We've made several different samples and we'll show you a little bit more about that. In your craft kit you're going to have some felt, buttons, needle and thread, um, and a little pattern. It's not hard to do, it just takes a little bit of patience and I think you'll be happy with the result. So I'm going to go around to the crafty side of this table <laughs> and Candle, you'll have to tell me uh, if I'm getting out of the frame. Alrighty. Alright, first of all, in your craft kit, you're going to have a piece of felt. Um, this is uh, the reason that this is kind of a beginning sewing project is because felt doesn't ravel. So there's there's no need to be worried that you're going to not get the seams hidden or anything like that. We're just going to sew around the edge and it's going to be great. You're also going to have a little um, pattern like this. You're going to have a little bit of, uh, you're going to have a little uh, piece of fabric with needle and some pins in it. And all those things will help us out as we're going along. So first of all, I want you to take your felt piece and fold it in half like that. The reason for that is because we need to have two piggy cutouts. So we're going to cut them both out at the same time and save ourselves a little trouble. I have made a cute little sewing kit out of an old uh, candy tin and I keep some little things in there like pins and I have a little case with some needles. I'm going to get one of those out. Um, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Threading that. I've got some thread in my kit. Uh, before I get started with my cutting out, I'm going to grab a few straight pins and I'm just going to uh, put a few of them into the little paper right through both layers of the felt. This will keep the fabric from sliding around while I'm cutting it so I'll have a more accurate result. Be careful not to poke yourself with the needle. It's very easy to do. I mean it won't be the death of you but it doesn't feel very good. Yeah it doesn't hurt. I mean it doesn't hurt for long but it does jab you for a second. It does. It really does jab you. Okay so I have now pinned this. I'm going to give you an option. If you want to um, trace around this with a pencil or something you could. I don't think it's necessary though because you do have your pattern pinned on there. I'm using a fabric scissors. Um, this isn't a special type of scissors. It's just the, the pair of scissors that I save just for cutting fabric. This is a scissors that I use for cutting paper. This one is very dull when I try to use it to cut uh, fabric. So that's why I have one set aside that says fabric only to remind myself not to cut paper with it. So I'm not going to cut the pattern out. I'm just going to cut right around it. And I'm going to hold it in one hand and just kind of move my fabric and scissors around like this. Uh, we also are going to be making an extra little cut in one side only of our little piggy pattern to make a slot for you to put your coin in. Now I will say that the reason that I, the teen, am not testing the craft out for y'all today is we actually filmed this whole video already and then we learned that I didn't have any audio. So. Uh, I really, made, really sad. <laughs> it, was, it was really sad because we filmed the whole thing. It had amazing commentary and great laughs. And then it, we found out it didn't keep any of the audio. So I initially made this uh, pig right here uh, before we did that craft. And it's got a little pink button. It's got the blue here and the purple on the back. And it's also got the stitching around all of the edges and the stitching around the little square. All right. During that video, I made this pink pig. And this one doesn't have the stitching around the square, but it has the uh, black button eye, uh, kind of a blue button eye actually, and the red stitching around here that I did. And this one is Beth's that she made to test out the craft. So 
So we've got several several color options. We've made this quite a few times now. <laughs> <laughs> so we can make these with our eyes closed in the dark. Um, so anyway, I've cut all the way around my uh, little pattern. So I'm going to remove the straight pins. I'm going to put them in here so I don't accidentally stab myself with them. Um, now, the next thing, Candle was holding up a little slot on one of the pigs. Can you hold that up again? So we got to make a little slot to put our coin in. So I'm going to take just one side. I'm only going to do it on one side of the pig. I'm going to fold the little piggy in half, about like this, okay? And I'm just going to make one little cut right here. All right, so I made a little cut. Now I'm going to make that cut just a little bit deeper by going this way around. This is just a quick way to make your coin slot. So I basically removed a little tiny rectangle out of there, and that's going to be my coin slot. And you might want to bring it a little more this okay. way. Okay, so here's the piece that I cut out, and here's what it looks like after I cut it. So I have one whole piggy and one with a little slice cut out. I'm done with my pattern for now. Before we get on to um, sewing the piggy together, I'm going to put the eye on. And I have some buttons here. Uh, I'm going to pick a what color. That's too big. Okay, I'm going to pick this little red button. I'm now going to thread my needle. So you've got some thread in your craft kit. If you struggle to thread your needle, you may need to ask someone for some help. Take about an 18 inch piece of thread. And it doesn't have to be exact, just a little No, no, not exact. Rough measurement. Um, if you haven't sewn much before, I wouldn't go much longer than that because you're going to get tangled up. Then you want to get your, uh, your needle. And it's a little bit easier to bring the needle, the eye of the needle down to the thread than to try to have a long piece of thread and stab it. Okay, so get your um, little end of your thread close up to your fingertips and bring the needle close to it. And I'm going to make a couple of attempts here. Okay, now I'm pulling it through. I'm going to pull through about that much. Then I'm going to come down to the other end. I'm going to wrap the thread around my finger a couple times and roll it off with my thumb and tighten that up into a nice little knot like that. Can you see that? A little down. Down? Yeah. Closer? Yeah. Okay, so there's my knot. All right, now that I have a knotted thread, I'm going to go over to my piggy. I'm going to place his eye. Okay, that looks okay doesn't it? Is that a yeah good spot? like the uh there's this one where that one is little, and then okay. uh this one is a little higher up and towards higher. the ear and then this one is about uh, midway between okay. those two okay so it, it, it doesn't matter it's yep. just where you where a typical yeah, eye i'm not going to put it over here yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we come up from the bottom okay and we just okay i'm going to say you, you're going to need to probably do at least a couple of passes. I'm going uh, down through the top and then I'm coming back up into a different hole. So I'm actually going down in one hole. This little uh, button has four holes. So I've done it a couple times in those two holes. Then I'm going to find the other two holes that don't have any thread yet. This can be a little tricky to figure out where your needle is going to come up. Okay, I got it there. So now I'm going to pull it up into the other hole. If you have a button that is only the two holes, then you'll just want to go around and around and around. Yeah, a few just times. go go a few times. Um, you know, yes, just to secure it so it doesn't pop off. Okay. Then when you get a, get it on there a few times, you can flip over to the back catch just a little bit of the fabric in there like that and make a loop. Looks like two loops, it's really one loop. Then put your needle through the loop, pull it, do that one more time, and that your your button should be on there just fine. So the, that didn't go all the way through, but that doesn't matter because it's secure and it's on the inside. 
All right, and the next thing I'm going to do is go back and make a fresh knot. I'm going to wrap it around a couple times, roll it off, and give it a tight pull. The reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to just do a quick little running stitch along um, the coin slot here. So a running stitch is pretty easy. I hope you can see this. I'm just going up and down in the fabric. I'm taking pretty long stitches. Um, when you're sewing clothing, of course, you do not take such long stitches. This is just um, decorative outside of here. So I can even do a couple of uh, a couple of in and out uh, stitches before I pull it all the way through. I'm trying to be kind of even. So I'll just push it through there, pull it. Don't pull it too tight or it'll kind of start to pucker. You don't need to be brutal with it or anything. And you might want to uh, show like a midway. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And that kind of shows it how it uh, goes through. Yes, and I'll do it again here. Do a couple more stitches here. Okay, and I'm just going to notice I'm just turning the little shape around as I'm sewing. Almost done with this part. And that just creates uh, what I'm showing right here. It's a, uh, you can see the little bits of red stitches along this gray pig here. And this one is a little bit more uneven with the uh, coin pouch area, but you can see the little indentations where the little sewn pieces are around. And that's purely for decoration. It doesn't impact the quality or doesn't impact how well it holds the coins. Nope, it's just a little extra fun detail. So I'm going to go back on the back and I'm going to do a little, grab that thread, I'm going to pull it through that little loop. I'm going to do that one more time. This part is going to be unseen, so it's not maybe the neatest job I would do because I'm holding it up in the air, but <laughs> that's okay. I'm going to snip that there. Okay, now our next part um, is to match up the two pieces of the pig. And now we're going to close the pouch entirely. And, and I'm going to get some more thread. And you'll just want to make sure that it's lined up well and that it's uh, the two pieces of the fabric uh, make the same shape. It's not overlapping or any areas. There's not any extras on the end. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, you can see that here, if I can get lined up on the camera, <laughs> uh, here on this side, when you look at the pig from the purple side, the blue is over, uh, over it a bit. but as long as it keeps the main shape of the pig, then it's good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I didn't want to use a short thread, so I'm re-threading with um, another long piece of thread. I don't know if I'll be able to get around the whole little piggy with one thread, but we'll see. Yeah, if not, I'll just do another one. Because <laughs> for this one especially, we had to do uh, several different times of going through and adding, um, making the new stitches and all that. So to hide your knot inside of the pig where it doesn't show, just go up through one of the piggy layers, okay, and it's going to be hiding back there. Then put your piggy down. If you want to, you can use some of the straight pins to hold the piggy sides uh, together. And that'll help keep it that even design. Yep, that'll help keep your pieces nice and aligned. Um, you, again, though, if you're using the straight pins, you've got to be careful not to stab yourself uh, because if you're holding on with this, you can jab your hand. So just, just be mindful that it's there. Now we're going to do that same little easy stitch around the side. We're just going to go up and down in the fabric like this. And we're going to do it again. Now I will say that if you are still relatively new to sewing like I am, like I know I've made these guys, but I can't go and sew anything other than these pigs. <laughs> uh, so if you're relatively new to it, you don't have to do the double uh, kind of through it. And no, let me show it. you. You could also do it one at a time. You could go down like that, pull it all the way through. Then you can come up from the back. Pull it through. So if you need to do it one at one stitch at a time, you can. If you um, feel confident to try a running stitch like this, you can grab a couple of little pieces of fabric and 
you know, experiment with what feels good for your hand. I'm taking really big stitches right now, more, more than I would, just so you can kind of hopefully see. I'm removing the pins when they get in my way. Um, and that is, I'm, I'm not even marking the seam. Now, normally if I was sewing uh, clothing or something, I would have a way to know I was keeping a very even seam. Again, this is just a little fun project and it's a folk art project. So folk art often is, uh, looks a little bit more rough, a little more hand stitched or what have you. You could sew this, in fact, the, the, when I was looking at this craft, it's actually a craft for the sewing machine and I just adapted it for hand sewing because I thought it would be fun. And this would be a cute little way to give a gift of money to a friend. You wouldn't have to use a pig. You could use any little animal shape and trace it onto some felt if you wanted to try that. Or you could, Candle, I didn't even think of this, you could skip the slot and make a little pillow. Oh yeah, you could. That would like, be, um... be a really cute idea. Or you could put some um, dried herbs in there and make a little sachet for your drawer of socks in case you have stinky socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could definitely, uh, instead of going and cutting out this little area right here, which is best seen on this, instead of cutting this out, skip that part entirely, make the pig shape, leave it open on one end, and then just yeah. stuff it full of whatever you want to stuff it with. Right. You could put some cotton in there, you could put some um, craft foam or whatever you put, you know, craft uh, stuffing in there. You could put like a little bit of uh, cotton in there and then go ahead and also put like some lavender and then you could have it as like a little uh, thing next to your bed to help you get to sleep yeah, at night help even. help you to relax, mm -hmm. right. That's a great idea. It'll be a relaxing pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That might be good to do with a sheep pillow. Oh, that's a great idea. And you know, a place where you could get um, silhouettes to make your own patterns, you could go to a coloring book and get some shapes from there. You could look for silhouettes on um, Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, on um, a search engine and print them out that way. Now we're getting almost all the way around to the end here. And if you do, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how to change the thread in case you need to do that. So say that I don't have enough thread, I'm just gonna go down one time. I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to grab a little bit of the fabric, make a little loop, and pull my thread through. I'm going to do that a couple times just to secure it. Then I'm going to trim it close to the fabric. Okay, so then if I want to do another um, thread, because don't don't let your thread get too short because you're going to have you're going to have problems. Um, it's better to have a thread that is a little too long than a little too short because um, you're, you're going to have a hard time making a knot if you don't have enough thread to work with. And I learned that the hard way when I was um, learning how to sew myself. I would get my thread down so close to the end I couldn't tie a knot and then I had to pick out a bunch of stitches. So I'm going to one more time thread my needle. I'm going to roll the thread around my finger and push it off with my thumb and then kind of, there's my, knee, my knot. I'm going to go right back where I left off, get rid of that, put the needle in that way and now the, needle, the knot is hidden inside of the piggy and then we'll just go around and quickly finish up the last little bit of our project here. We just got to go around the back feet and up the ham hocks or whatever those are called. <laughs> oh, I see I made a little knot there. Oh well. I'm just going to keep going because... And it doesn't have to be super exact. None of this has to be like super perfect. If you can see on this pig right here, there's actually several spots where the little... Uh, the design's uneven, the stitches aren't super perfect. The main purpose of this craft is to just give you a little pouch to put some coins or other little items in. So it doesn't have to look super pretty. And that's the none of these crafts that we make on Teen Tessa Crafts have to be pretty. They just have to be functional or cute. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And if you're new at sewing or doing some of these other skills, 
this is a great thing to practice on because you know it doesn't cost a lot it's small and doable and as you practice of course you get better so that's that's why we try things out that are new and different now I'm to the end so I'm going to go put my needle back down here in between the two layers I'm going to just grab a little bit of the fabric I'm going to make a little loop and put my needle through and give it a pull. I'll do that one more time. And that that secures it and then I can just go right in here and snip it. And there we have a little piggy. Is Overall, that showing? yeah, 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 okay. yeah. <laughs> Overall for uh, a novice crafter, someone that's uh, new to sewing and anything like that, this craft can take anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour. Maybe a bit longer if you're still trying to like learn the stitches uh, for or someone. Or learn how to thread your needle. Yeah, yeah. Things like that. That yeah. one took me a while to do. Uh, but if you are a bit better at sewing, you can always go and do this. And I believe it took around 15, 20 minutes uh, for Beth to do that. And she's been uh, doing that for a little bit. So, Do you want to make our thing bigger? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I hope you give this craft a try. Here I am. <laughs> So here, oh look, it matches your shirt. Oh. Yes, <laughs> and, and it matches, the eyeball matches my apron. Hey. Yeah, so anyway, try some of these little mm, <laughs> piggies. Oink, oink, oink. <laughs> we made a herd. <laughs> <laughs> We've had to do this so many times. <laughs> oh, anyway, hope you have fun with it. If you get stuck or you have trouble, just give us a call, 885-6776, or stop by with your project in person, and we're happy to help you out. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.